Uh, first, I'll uh, start to talk about what the climate community thinks about N. So they, they have discovered, they, they have a good uh, picture of uh, the, the dy dynamics of N. So they understand uh, Walker circulation, Kelvin's ways, uh, specific uh, the, the thermodynamics and fluid dynamics, they, they have a good uh, knowledge of. But their forecast is very bad, uh, that they can only forecast maybe two, three months maybe longer if it's strong El Nino. And I think that the long range forecast is something which is not possible, which is wrong. And I think that uh, ENSO is driven by weather noise, which is wrong. Um, uh, their understanding of ENSO variability is uh, they don't have a clue. And uh, the, the climate community, they, they suffer from what I call the black box syndrome. They, they don't look for per, uh, impact from outside the, the climate system, internal climate system. And what they have applied for, for ENSO forecast is what they call cause theory. And uh, also in common world is called the butterfly effect. Next, please. So the real drivers of ENSO is from lunar perigee pulses when the, the, when the, the moon's orbit is, uh, when it's closest to Earth, it sends out a gravitational pulse with the strong tides. And also from variation in solar wind and variation in Earth's magnetic field. So my judgment, uh, this is, I haven't calculated, but, but I think that uh, random weather noise is responsible maybe for five, 10 percent of ENSO variability. And uh, electromagnetic influences from the sun on ENSO is maybe 20, 5, 30 percent. And the rest is from, the strongest is from this uh, lunar perigee perigee pulses. Next, please. Um, <coughs> the, the, the data is hidden deep in the, for, for this effect is hidden deep in the, in the data. So what we have here is uh, some things which is not linear. They have no fixed frequency. And also the, there's a time delay from impulse to, to uh, the effect on answer for maybe months and uh, even years. The normal uh, way to, to study this is by the, using regression analysis, frequent analysis, and uh, building dynamic models and statistical models. You can use a uh, neural network or mock or change and things like that. But it doesn't work because it's very deep hidden in the, in the data. But uh, uh, artificial neural network works. That's what I'm using. But I don't use a timeline. I, I use uh, input from these uh, forces from the lunar perigee pulses and from electromagnetic variation from the sun. Next, please. So I have uh, built, um, I, I will not talk about how uh, artificial neural network works, but uh, uh, the mathematical about it. But uh, what we have, what is built on as a totic transfer function, and uh, there is uh, hundreds of weights in, in these models. And I use uh, data from next previous months and back three years. And this is an iterative process. So the red is what I, I use for training. It's uh, to minimize the variance by an algorithm. And I use green for testing. This, uh, I use monthly value, values. So when I get a minimum value of euro over in the green area, I say the weights, and then I can regenerate the answer forecast. So here we have uh, hundreds of transfer functions which is created recursively in this process. Uh, 
And in blue, uh, I re recreate all the Enso variables. Because I, I have the, the tidal effect from the moon. And, um, but I haven't from, from the electromagnetic variance. But I, I, I forecast in the model because I, I know the trend is down right now because it's, we have going down from a high value of the solar cycles. Next, please. So here I have used it for, for the AP index. I have. Uh, uh, put on a trend and then I put on some noise to, to simulate what I expect is going to happen. Next, please. Uh, <coughs> so I, I do not use any ENSO data into the, the neurons in the network. Uh, the, the tidal gravitational anomaly vector is uh, the combined vector from the, the lunar and the solar um, tidal force during l lunar per perigee. So I have two parameters from the, this. This one is the strength of the tidal force, and the second is from the angular position over the uh, equator, the longitude. Then I add also solar wind data, its temperature density and speed, and I use electromagnetic field variation in KP and AP parameter. So I haven't used any ultraviolet uh, data into the network because I don't have data spanning that long. Next, please. I use a uh, sample of nine setups, and then I, I calculate the mean value. Um, and I have a random setup of the, all the neurons when I pick. Next, please. So here I have an ENSO forecast or ENSO recreation based on the artificial ne neural network. To read this, the real answer value is stopped in uh, 2016, and the, the darker blue value is all the way from 1980 up to 2022. Next, please. Next. Yeah, okay. Here I have um, uh, zoom out this area from 2014 and to 2022. And we can see here that the red line is what I calculated in the neural network. And the green is the real answer value. You can see that it's pick up the recent uh, El Nino, but it ha haven't uh, picked up this, uh, all the strength. And right now we are um, in September and um, and you can see the, the downward trend has uh, stopped right now. And the, the, the forecast, the climate model they use now, is that uh, we, we in a weak La Nina, we have bottom up, and it's, it's going to up, going up. But uh, my calculation is that it will reach a deep La Nina in maybe February, March. And then we're going up to a more El Nino value, high value, in early 2018. Um, but uh, because uh, the heat pool in the Western Pacific has been depleted because of the last El Nino, I don't think it's going to be that high. But you can see that overall, up to 2020, we will have a relatively high value of ENSO. Next, um, yeah, let's say this here. So we will have high values in the coming years of ENSO. Next, please. Here I have uh, making similar predictions earlier, but uh, the test uh, period is shorter. So I have one for 2000. 12 and 2015, and you can see that it is uh, 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 
forecast the, the, the recent uh, El Nino. Um, so I have this, this is, it has the same structure as the recent uh, longer forecast I made. Next, please. I started by, by, by uh, looking at uh, temperature anomaly, the derivative value of, from satellite, and, and I s s s knew, knew that uh, ENSO is uh, uh, connected to, to global temperature. So I s put it at 100%, and then I looked at other variables like uh, sea so global sea surface temperature variation in uh, Earth's rotation, <coughs> and so on. And um, because of that, I started to look at ENSO because ENSO is a very important parameter. So next, please. Uh, I started to look at uh, tidal forcing, the, the force, uh, the strength of it, and the, the, the latitude of it uh, at new moon, full moon, and lunar perigee. And I found that uh, lunar perigee uh, had a good correlation to, to, to ENSO. And then I looked further and I combined solar and lunar effect, uh, two vector. Next, please. So here we can see the elliptical orbit. It's, it has a cyclicity of about 8.8 .8 years, uh, turning around this uh, orientation of perigee, apogee, apogee orientation. Next, please. And here we have a lunar mood. Uh, also, uh, when it's going to reach the turn over the, the ecliptical field. It has a periodicity of 18.6 years. And because of all, all these forces, it's uh, creating a, a lunar peggy pulse, which is, has a strong variability and they look very chaotic. Next, please. Um. So we, what I had, the, the correlation is both to from lunar perigee on ENSO is uh, for delta ENSO, the derivative value. Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah, that, that's all I had to say now. Okay.